Okay. Um, one thing I want to um, tell you or remind you, the quadratic formula that he just talked about, if you look at the formula sheet that I gave you at the entrance, it's on there. Bad news is you cannot bring that formula sheet with you to the test. I mean, you can bring it, but you can't have it out next to you during the test. Those are the formulas. It's like a summary sheet. So this sheet, if you didn't get one, we have more in the back. This is just a review sheet for you to help you study. All these formulas, you need to know them for the final. They will not be given to you during the final. You must know them. But we summarize them on a sheet so you will know all the formulas you need to learn and have them in one place. That was what the sheet was for, to help you study. You cannot bring it with you to the final and put it next to your final to help you. You have to know it before the final. Probably, mm, well, I didn't make this, so I don't know. But the midpoint is just like its name says. It's a point, so you have to have a point. For the x's, you add the x's and divide by 2. For the y's, you add the y's and divide by 2. Midpoint, like its name says, is an average. You average the x's and average the y's. So if you won't add that formula there. Okay, we were on, this was a set of problems he was on. We have to speed it up. We got to kind of finish. Okay. Um, so we might start skipping problems because we're just, if you all know how to do one of the problems, then you can practice them at home. Remember, the math lab is open until the very last final. So you can still go and get help. Just one thing we beg. Don't show up in the lab with the review packet and say, I don't know anything. We can't teach you in the hour before the final what your teacher was trying to teach you in a semester. We have had people do that. They come to us an hour before their final and say, I can't factor. I can't do anything for you an hour before your final. You're not going to learn a semester's worth of material in one hour. I'm sorry. You've got to study on your own. We're not miracle workers. Though we try, but we're not. The truth is, we know we're not. Okay, so for this first equation, what would you do to start? Yeah, I could do that. The only thing that needs to be factored is this denominator. So, following Mr. Judge's Matthew method, Matthew, just call Mr. Judge's method because he's the only person I've seen with that method, but it works. <coughs> Sorry, that's plus three and minus two, I think. Two numbers that multiply give me negative six and added one. Yeah. Now, notice these two are these same two. That's very nice when that happens. So what I'm going to do is I want to multiply both sides of the equation. Remember what you do to one, you do to the other. I want to multiply both sides by the common denominator, which is that. So I'm multiplying both sides by x plus 3, x minus 2. 
I know my handwriting is atrocious, atrocious at this hour. Now, keep in mind when we're multiplying, we want to multiply this and this one. When I multiply this by this, the x plus 3's will cancel. So that's going to leave me 8 times. That was x minus 2. But I'm not, we have this bad habit of trying to cancel out the x plus 3's like that. I'm not going to do that because this whole thing also multiplies the second one. When this mess multiplies the second one, the x minus 2's are going to cancel and my x plus 3 will be the left there. So you don't want to cross them out because then you're going to think there's nothing left. But when you multiply the second one, it still multiplies. Now when I multiply the, what's this side? Right side. Right side, the denominators cancel. So I'm just left with x plus 8. The beauty of this is you got rid of all your fractions. No longer do you have fractions there. And I know that you hate those. So then you just multiply it out. 8x minus 16 minus 4x minus 12 equals x plus 8. And now like Mr. Mr. Judge said, you want to get your like terms together. So I could subtract x from both sides and subtract 8. 8x minus x would give me 7x minus 4x would be 3x. Negative 16 minus 8 negative 24 minus 12 negative 36 now we have negative th th I know I mean pause sorry 3x add 36 to both sides and divide by 3 and x is 12 one thing I recommend when you do the test, when you get it, go through it and do all the problems that just by looking you know how to do. Then go back and take your time with the others. Keep in mind it's not a race. You don't get points for being quick, for being the first one to turn it in. You get points for being correct. Speed isn't something you're interested in. Don't, it doesn't matter if everybody has left the classroom and you're the last one there. You have two and a half hours to take your final. Take your time. There'll be people who 15 minutes after it starts, they leave the classroom. Don't worry, they didn't get 100. Not even I can do the test in 15 minutes. I doubt many of the teachers can unless they're the ones that made up the test. And even then they can't. Take your time. Sign mistakes are deadly for the final. You'll, get your, you'll go back and ask to look at your test and see that you made a whole bunch of sign mistakes. And because of that, you'll have to repeat the class. Take your time. Oh, my handwriting's awful. Okay, any questions on that problem? Yes. God, these papers just, this is just, okay. Where are we? Let me see if I can read my handwriting. Okay. You understand this. 
12 minus 12 equals x plus 8. You got that, right? Okay. 8x minus 4x would be 4x. No. What's negative 16 and negative 12? negative 28 and then when I subtract 8 I get the 36 no I add 8 I copied something wrong but you get 36 that's how I got it okay for the next problem I don't take exception if you prefer Mr. Judge frankly so do I I would have been happy to let him do the whole thing, but he needed a break. Okay, this one. What's the common denominator? So I want to multiply both sides by x plus 3. Now when I multiply the right, I'm just left with negative x, correct? Now, when we multiply the left, the left side has two terms. Remember, terms are separated by a plus or a minus sign. So the x plus 3 has to multiply this and that. So when I multiply this by this, I'm just going to get, is that an 8 or a 3? Helps if I work with my glasses on. Ouch. And that's going to be 2 times x plus 3. Because when you multiply this by this, the x plus 3 cancels. But then you have to multiply this by the 2. So there it's not going to cancel. So that's 3 minus 2x minus 6 equals negative x. Negative 2x minus 3 equals negative x. With me so far? Can you raise it over the Oh. Now I can add x to both sides. That gives me negative 3x minus 3 equals 0, right? Well, did, you, uh, did you subtract 3 from negative 6? Yeah, I said 3 minus 6 is okay, negative 3 because okay. the 6 is negative. If you have $3 and you write a check for six dollars you're going to be left in the hole in the bank of course a lot more than negative three because you got the bank charges and then I added X oh, shoot I did that wrong again I add X to both sides that gives me negative one X I don't know what's wrong with me today yeah probably negative 1x minus 3 equals 0. And so then I would have negative x, add 3 to both sides. Negative x equals 3, so x is... Yeah, go ahead, ask me, because I'm messing up. Negative... I have 3 minus 6. Are you back over here? 3 minus 6 is negative 3. Okay, but if it's negative 6 minus 3, right? No, it's negative 6 plus 3. Because there's not a sign in front of the 3. So that would be negative 6 plus 3. We're not finished with this one. 
So far, are you with me? Yes. <laughs> Trying to get there. Okay, but now there's another problem that we haven't used so far. What you should always do, but we tend to just throw it by the wayside, is checking our answers, right? Just because I want you to. Take this answer and plug it into your denominator and tell me what you get. When I plug negative 3 into the denominator, it's going, it's going to be 0. And we cannot divide by 0. So this answer is no solution. X equals negative 3 is an extraneous solution. So all that work for nothing. <laughs> all that messing up I did to get out that there's no solution anyway. Don't you just hate that when you work all that and it comes out? Okay, so the next one. That sh we should be able to do that. Even I should be able to do that one. What's the common denominator? 3x. So we multiply both sides by... the problem? X plus 1. Okay. So we're multiplying both sides by 3X. Oh, that's true. And I'm wondering why I couldn't get this turn. There. So on this side, the x's cancel, leaving me 3 times x plus 1. On this side, the 3's cancel, leaving 10x. Right? Right. Multiply it out, get rid of the parentheses now what do we want to do like terms first so I want to combine the X's together so what would I do to combine the X's or I could just subtract 3x from both sides and that leaves 3 equals 7x. Now what would I do? Now my original problem My original problem had a 3x on the bottom, right? Mm -hmm. So x equals 3 sevenths will not make it 0. So this is a good answer. That would be my answer.
So now we have this these problems on six. I think that's what we have left. That's fine. Finish this first. Okay. Okay, this one. Again, this one, if you look at it, it's solving the equation. Same thing we've been doing. But this one, if you notice, the first one, 13, it's already factored. So all you have to do is use the zero factor property or the zero property, whatever they call it in this book. We set each factor equal to zero. Now my first factor is three. Three is a number. Three is never going to be equal to zero. So three is not zero. X plus two is zero or X minus one is zero. So we get X equals negative two or X equals one. That's it. The thing to be aware of with this one is we tend to just by automatically start multiplying that together. Oh, there's a product. I must multiply. Stop and read the question. I don't need to multiply here. I just need to set each piece to zero. Don't waste your time. Don't make it harder than it is. But again, you shouldn't leave 15 minutes after you start the test either. No teacher gives you points for being quick. It's being correct. So take your time. Okay, the next one. Four, is that 14? 14. It says solve the equation and then find the value of x minus 10. Well, to, yes. Your 13 is your 14 is in my 14. That's a different problem. My 13. This one here. Is your 13 or 14? Okay. No problem. Um, so what you want to do here to find the value of x minus 10, you need to first find the value of x. So let's solve that equation. To solve it, we need to find the common denominator, which is 6. Okay, now let's see if I can read. Oh. Thirteen x over six, I'm going to multiply that by six, minus one half times six equals five x over three times six. I'm multiplying everything times six, which is the common denominator. denominator. Because my goal is to get rid of fractions so I don't have to work with fractions. This would give me thirteen x minus three. Three with six would be two, so that would be 10 X. Okay, questions? Now what do I wanna do? 
Okay, collect like terms. So what would I do to collect like terms? Let's move the 13 over so the x's will be on one side and the number will be on the other. So that would be negative 3 equals negative 3x. Now what do I do to leave the x by itself? Divide by negative 3, so x is 1. But the question was, what is the value of x minus 10? So x is 1, 1 minus 10 is negative 9. Okay? 